All right, it's time to break down the film one scene at a time. Act one. Why don't we set some shit up? Our restrained masterstroke of highbrow sophistication begins with John Travolta, aka Sean Archer, on a carousel, which is a nice little deadfall callback. There. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he kisses his son and on the <laughs> cheek. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking, and a Punisher call forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah Touche. There's a couple of parts that I'll get into when they happen. He kisses his son on the cheek like he's Scarlett Johansson at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same kiss. <laughs> uh, and then he runs his fingers... Over this poor kid's face like a blind person trying to see someone's facial features with their fingers. <laughs> Get used to that sh- weird shit because yeah. there's going to be a whole lot of it in this movie. Oh my God. It's so weird. <laughs> it's Jeez, so weird. What a start. <laughs> Uh, thankfully, Nick Cage, a.k.a. Caster Troy, posts up nearby with a high-powered rifle and is hopefully about to put an end to whatever the fuck weird shit is going on on this goddamn he, merry-go-round. And he looks like High from Raising Arizona. Yeah. He's got the same mustache that yeah. H.I. had. Nick sports a dope-ass rape stash. <laughs> I'm sure 90s women were clamoring to ride while sucking down a big gulp and zeroing in on Danny Zuko. Oh, my God. Uh, Troy shoots Archer through the back and right into the pumpkin pie haircut of Freak's recently <laughs> finger-raped face. <laughs> Troy sees the kid on the ground and seems to feel some remorse for accidentally killing the wrong member of the Archer family. So I guess he just decides to get him next time. And yeah, he just what, uh, leaves Archer to scream over his dead kid. <laughs> he just gets up and leaves. Like, just just walk up and shoot him or just shoot him again with the gu- <laughs> like, gun only have one bullet. Yeah, he's on a budget. Maybe maybe he fell off the other side of the carousel and he couldn't see him. Uh so yeah, maybe. I was like, in my head, it was like, eh, I'll apply some logic to it. Maybe he didn't have a clear enough shot. <laughs> it definitely felt like it was on the same side. Yeah, because yeah, he could see he's it staring happen. at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watching him cry over his He only brought spot. one bullet, all right? <laughs> They're expensive. I'm going to get this guy with one bullet. <laughs> one shot, one kill. He almost got a twofer. <laughs> he almost did, yeah. He almost got a double kill. <laughs> he got the one that counted. Though. We see Troy light a cigarette, and in monologue, he delivers the line, All I took from Archer were memories. Images, really. They're worth more than any take from any con. They keep me honest. (laughs) While the uh, carousel spins in the background. (laughs) The end. (laughs) Oh, wait, that was was Deadfall. That's how how Deadfall ended. (laughs) Instead of of picking up the money from the ground, he's just picking up his dead kid's skull pieces (laughs) in the background. (laughs) <laughs> Scooping up his brains. <laughs> oh my God. They're everywhere. We cut to six years later. Sean Archer is in his office, surrounded by awards and loading his gun, staring off into space like a weirdo while opera music plays for some reason. I, 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 there's a lot of moments that are just like, why? Just because? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. John, John Wu likes opera music. John Wu likes opera. <laughs> Turns out his task force has zeroed in on the location of Archer's nemesis, Caster Troy, who is busy dropping a bomb while dressed as a priest, which was pretty gross to watch, but honestly, it felt like a bold move by John Wu to start the film. He's <laughs> tra- dropping, dropping a bomb. Dropping a, yeah. dropping a turd. <laughs> 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 he even does a little squat. <laughs> he does. <laughs> As he shakes his head. <laughs> uh, maybe that's, I'm going to picture that's how Nick Cage takes a dump. <laughs> <laughs> to squat. <laughs> Travolta horribly delivers some campy exposition about them being a covert anti-terrorism unit with billion-dollar satellites, and they'll take a break when the case breaks. Because we're a covert anti-terrorism team that is so secret that when we snap our fingers, nothing happens. <laughs> Stuff like that. Who's the one who's over the top in this movie? Is it Travolta or is it Cage? They go naked. It they feels naked. more natural coming from Cage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does. In my opinion. Uh, meanwhile, Nick Cage triggers the bomb he left and makes a goofy face to himself. 
Something he does in nearly every scene of this movie. <laughs> uh, then the guy who just left thousands of pounds of explosives makes himself as suspicious and memorable as humanly possible. He dances in front of a choir singing hallelujah, headbangs to the singing like he's at a guar concert, <laughs> and then he just casually kind of rapes a teenage girl in front of the choir in front of everybody while screaming hallelujah at the top of his lungs. <laughs> He tops off this incredible minute of absolutely spellbinding cinema with what is quite possibly the cagiest cage face in the history of cage faces. <laughs> so it, I, Amber started watching it last night after I watched it. And uh-huh. That's what she said. She was like, that's the most, that's the cagiest moment I've ever seen. <laughs> it may be, maybe the top cagey moment mm-hmm. of all time. Archer gets a tip that Pollux Troy, Castor's brother, who is named after some bad jokes that were popular in the 80s. (laughs) I wonder if you're going to look up any Pollock jokes and just (laughs) sprinkle them in whenever Pollock shows up. No, no. I was going to. Those are offensive. Uh, Pollock's paid for a private jet at LAX, so they head on over to the airport where we meet Pollux. Say, how many Pollocks does it take to (laughs) screw in a light bulb? Three. Oh, man, Raising Arizona is so much better than this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Pollux Troy may or may not be one of those aliens from Galaxy Quest because he (laughs) speaks exactly like them for some inexplicable reason throughout the whole movie. You had a sex sandwich with his wife and his sister the night he was sent here. Seeing that face on you makes me afraid my tiramisu might come back up. You are our last hope. Oh, my God. Um, Hello. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Quick fact, Mark Wahlberg turned down the role of Pollux Troy. <laughs> wow, he, he doesn't turn down anything. <laughs> oh, man. Mm, feel it, feel it. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Just that weird way of talking. Uh, there was a reason behind that. It was based off of some other actor in a different movie that he thought was interesting and uh, it's, it just takes you out of every scene that <laughs> I he's I thought in. it was like they were just trying to make him seem like the weird guy between John Travolta and Nick Cage. <laughs> like, I mean, they succeeded. Being weird guys. <laughs> they were like, well, we got to make somebody even weirder. It's <laughs> <laughs> a weirder brother. Yeah, Nick Cage is the put together guy out of those <laughs> Yeah. <two. laughs> what would Caster Troy's weirder younger brother be <laughs> like? <laughs> brother, I uh, need your help. Uh, troy meets him at the plane and reveals himself to be ever so slightly eccentric his goons take off his jacket for him which is flowing in the wind he carries two golden pistols behind his back and his brother is anxiously awaiting his arrival with a fancy carved box containing a pair of sunglasses four joints some chiclets Bazooka Joe bubblegum, a knife, some pills, and I think one of those balls you find crystal wizards holding at those mall ninja shops. <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite part of that whole part is it it's part of the opening credits where it says directed by John Woo. And it's like as <laughs> Caster's getting out of the, the car with the, <laughs> this cloak flowing behind him, like as if you can't it's tell it's of, a John Woo. And picture. a perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> In case you had That's any doubts. Yeah. Is this Michael Bay? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Definitely John Woo. <laughs> yeah, in that, you know, it was, this was a couple of years before The Matrix made long, flowing <laughs> trench coats cool looking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also killed them for the rest of the action movie genre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least pleather, you know, fakey looking ones. <clears throat> yeah. Well, even in this, like when he's wearing his priest outfit or whatever it's like the same outfit neo wears in the matrix because it was based on like <laughs> jesuit priests or whatever it's yeah like, it looks goofy and this looks kind of cool in the matrix and then they could never use it ever again because <laughs> it would just be like ripping off the matrix they kind of created the i mean they took from uh the kind of techno genre for that movie a lot and and those movies in general and uh it's called edm they, they kind of ruined that whole <clears throat> genre <laughs> nobody could dress like that anymore nobody could make a movie like that anymore pollux is very happy to see troy and says mm, you are our only hope <laughs> and troy tries to, and troy ties his shoes for him because i'm guessing just based on the way he talks he doesn't know how <laughs> oh my god 
Why does he talk like that? Troy plays got your nose with his henchmen in the form of a gold dragon money clip of some sort <laughs> before really weirdly delivering the line. And stay away from downtown on the 18th. It's going to be a little um, smoggy. That was the uh, the masked uh, <laughs> influence on this one. <laughs> smoky. <laughs> smoky. <laughs> it was so weird. On the plane, Castor says, let's go, let's go, and board, let's go. And then tells the stewardess to sit on his lap while he says, You know, I can uh, eat a peach for hours. <laughs> then she sucks on his tongue like it's a dick. And yeah, that's the moment. <laughs> Where I was like checking the timestamps, how much was left of this movie. <laughs> oh God, what have I got myself in for? This guys, really got a thing for '90s women in pantsuits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Middle-aged '90s women in pantsuits because he <laughs> tries to hook up with like three of them in this movie. Yeah, this movie's already stranger <laughs> than anything we've ever done, including Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> yep. Suddenly, Archer's men surround the plane. Oh, wait, no. They all follow behind the plane while Archer drives straight at it like he's playing chicken with it. The uh, tongue sucker reveals herself to be an (laughs) FBI agent and is taken out right away by our film's equivalent to Steve Urkel. It's a bang-up job all around. (laughs) He's an FBI FBI agent. Shoots him. Did I do that? (laughs) <laughs> I'm getting it. No, I mean, I was talking about Pollux because Pollux like throws a briefcase at her. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Archer swerves to avoid hitting the plane when he realizes Troy has his all star agent held so- hostage, but Troy kills her 10 seconds later anyway while making a goofy face. <laughs> Instead of following the plane after the agent's body hits the runway, everyone, including the helicopter in the chase, just kind of stops to check on her. (laughs) I'm sure she's fine, not like she (laughs) fell out of a moving plane after being shot in the back or anything. (laughs) Anyway, Sean takes off in the helicopter because John Travolta is contractually obligated to fly something in every film he ever appears in. And he takes off after Caster. He clips the rudder of the plane while Troy is holding a gun to the uh, the pilot's head and says, Fly! I can't! Fly, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> he can't, you know, because the rudder is, mm-hmm. you know, how helicopters are super strong and they can just mm-hmm. hold down plane. Yeah. <laughs> Archer shoots out of the window of the, the helicopter and takes out the plane's engine. Guys, I have a feeling that this movie might be a little over the top. Just <laughs> mm-hmm. This is accurate. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm no expert on aviation. <laughs> Troy cocks his gun for like the 12th time in this scene and then kills the pilot just for the hell of it. He yeah. swerves the plane into a hangar filled with sparklers or something and the plane comes to a stop. <laughs> You need sparklers <laughs> for everything. God damn, dude. It's another John Woo thing, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't remember the sparkler thing being so prevalent in any other John Woo thing, but Maybe holy I'm just thinking crap. of just 90s in general, like a lot of action movies used it instead yeah. of it because they're cheaper Sparks than explosions. Everywhere. Quick fact, the crew had to get the plane shot in one take because they were really destroying the plane. Uh, that that shot, uh, uh, they just did one time and it was from 13 different angles. Holy smokes. Which I think they used every one of them at some (laughs) point in that shot. (laughs) (laughs) Troy jumps out of the plane firing two guns at the same time in slow-mo as sparks continue to rain down from a nearby fireworks show. (laughs) His uh, dorky brother does the same thing. And somehow neither of them are shot despite hitting everything they aim at while being shot at by like 30 FBI agents. <laughs> it takes 20 weeks of intense training that has been described as one of the most difficult training programs law enforcement officials will ever go through. But Pollux can't tie his own shoes. Troy cuts through these guys like butter. <laughs> <laughs> Troy shoots some dude's ear off, which is an important de- detail, even though it's like happens like super quick. And then blasts a couple other guys while the FBI arrest Pollux, who obviously doesn't say Cass, but that's what we hear. Cass! 
<laughs> if you watch that, it's like, whoa, he did. He definitely didn't say whatever because he says Cas because Caster, yeah. but he definitely didn't say that. <laughs> and it's like in slow mo. It's weird. It's a weird shot. <laughs> Uh, Troy shoots one of Archer's guys, so Archer shoots at him with a spark bullet of some kind, and then they shoot back and forth. There's tons of sparks and explosions caused by everyday ordinary bullets, and then Archer jumps on one of his own guys for no good reason, and there's sparks, and then they keep running out of bullets and reloading in slow-mo, and then there's sparks and explosions, and then Caster gets to jump on Archer and shoots him, and, and shoots at him, and then there's sparks, and, then, and his bullets start fires and big explosions, and then Archer shoots a chain and flies up in the air. Air and shoots at Troy, who is also flying in the air, and they cause a bunch of some sparks. And then Troy shoots some more FBI guys, which causes a whole bunch of sparks. And a jet engine starts up, and it makes a big loud noise, and and there's lots of sparks. <laughs> it's just like that little kid who wrote Fear, Fast and Furious, man. <laughs> I can see you ridic- meticulously <laughs> taking those notes, <laughs> pausing every two seconds to write down what's it's, happening. Play by I wrote play. down exactly what happened in that scene. <laughs> None of that is made up. It's all then there's sparks and then there's fire and then there's explosion. <laughs> and then he shoots the chain and goes in the air and then and he flies through the air. But uh, Caster's also flying through the air somehow. <laughs> There's another part that I wanted to point out, but but you were on a roll, so I didn't. But <laughs> when Caster gets a shotgun and he shoots one of Archer's guys, yes. the guy's yes. clearly got a wire hanging down his back, yeah. and like you see him, you see him run around the corner with the wire on his back, and then <laughs> Caster shoots him, and then you can see the wire like yank him up into a box. Or yeah, like- Twenty feet into the air. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> See, nowadays that would be super easy to take out, but I don't even know how they took those out back in the. the I think they days. just did the lighting better so that you didn't see it, maybe, mm-hmm. and they, you know, and they just shot around it or whatever. But it was mm-hmm. super. Maybe not have the guy run around the corner with it, like hanging from his back before you even <laughs> yeah. get a chance to use it. Because if they hadn't had that and just had the quick shot of he getting pulled away, you probably wouldn't have seen it. But there's, it was, there's so much insanity in that scene that I didn't even <laughs> notice that. I didn't see it at all. Yeah, so. go back and watch mm-hmm. it. Um, <laughs> Because I showed, showed it to Amber and I rewound it two to a second because I was like, did I just see a wire? <laughs> He's got two wires hanging down and you can totally see it. Troy and Archer get the jump on each other and both think the other one has one. Uh, talking like Pollux Troy now. <clears throat> Troy and Archer get the jump on each other and both think the other one only has one bullet left. But it's cool because they both have something in common. Wow. We've got something in common. We both know our guns. I hated that. It's such a stupid line. We know our guns. What? (laughs) Why would you say that in that moment? I don't know. Troy tries to recruit Sean into his terrorism gang or something, so Archer tells him to shut the fuck up, to which Troy says, You watch your fucking mouth! (laughs) Which comes back. He needs to do that in the the prison or whatever. Troy says Archer wouldn't know what to do with himself if he puts a caster in prison and then asks if Archer's daughter is ripe yet. Oh, like we haven't asked all of our friends the same questions. <laughs> then he barks at him like some weirdo ambulance dispatch manager. <laughs> and then he pulls the trigger, but of course, he doesn't he didn't he didn't know his gun that well and he doesn't have a bullet left. <laughs> So as Archer puts his gun to Troy's head, he begs for forgiveness and says, I'll blow you, man. (laughs) No, wait, that was Mandy. This is way stupid. (laughs) He says, well, I think you better pull the trigger because I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Ready, ready for the big ride, baby. (laughs) You know, because he's crazy. Yeah. This is what John Wu thinks crazy people do. (laughs) He pulls a knife and Sean kicks him in front of a jet engine, which blows him against a fence, knocking him conveniently into a coma. This whole movie just works on cartoon logic, I swear to God. Over at Sean's house, we meet his mom. Oh, wait, no, that's his wife. (laughs) Joan Allen is the oldest looking youngish woman I've ever seen. (laughs) She looks like a lion anamorph. (laughs) 
human turning into a lion. <laughs> <laughs> Sean interrupts a fight his wife and daughter are having about really dumb looking emo makeup that is revealed to us in a weird slow mo close up of her eyes. There's so many of these dumb slow mos where he what the fuck, didn't dude. use a high speed camera to film a slow mo shot and instead just sh- <laughs> slowed down a regular you know, film yeah. camera and it looks so bad. <laughs> I feel and like they always, did that a lot though in the late nineties. Well, okay, I, I guess. But he does a lot in this movie too. And yes, it's always oh, yeah. like it's always some dramatic close up on a character or something where it doesn't really fit and it's just yeah. really bad. Same it in, just in felt Mission really too. out of place in that in yeah. that scene and that I mean I guess we're we're talking about face off, so it was pretty fucking over the top already, <laughs> but like it was mm-hmm. like God, that was weird. She storms away when Sean asks her who she's supposed to be this week. I'm supposed to be me, Dad. You don't understand, <laughs> Dad. I'm Gene Simmons from Kiss, Dad. <laughs> I'm Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> Ziggy Stardust. <laughs> Sean can't seem to connect to his wife or daughter since his son died or something. But thankfully, he'll connect. With, he'll reconnect with them in a big way once Caster swaps faces with him. <laughs> You could tell Sean is an absolute mess since he hasn't shaved in a couple of hours. His tie is loosened a little bit and his hair is slightly messy. But he tells Eve that he caught Caster Troy, so his six years of being a terrible dad and a sad sack of a husband are behind them now. (laughs) I love that that's just like, it's just problem solved. As soon as we catch Caster Troy, I will no longer be a shitty husband, (laughs) shitty father, boring as hell person. Just stiff uh, broom up his ass person to work with. <laughs> she's, just, she's just kind of a shitty dude. I was kind of rooting for Caster, I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's overjoyed when uh, he says he's going to take a desk job and he does what any normal person would do when the man who has kept him up countless nights for six years straight has been brought to justice he strokes her face in a really fucking <laughs> weird way, like he's trying to reach Helen Keller. <laughs> Water. Finally, Water. things can go back to normal. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> oh, fuck. Any miracle worker fans? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> At the FBI, everyone in the office gives wet blanket Sean a round of applause for bringing down Caster Troy, and he's a huge bitch about it. <laughs> he rejects a bottle of champagne at Heaven Lake, nicely sent over from the CIA, <laughs> and says they should salute all the uh, no-name good guys who were killed in that crazy, spark-filled, <laughs> ridiculous shootout rather than him. <laughs> It's nice of, nice of Evan Lake to send that over. Yeah, it's touchy. <laughs> it's touchy. Then he closes the case on Castor Troy and the murder of his son on a computer that seems to have the same graphics as a Sega Dreamcast. <laughs> <laughs> CCH Pounder, who has played some variation of a cop more times than Timothy Oliphant, shows up as an FBI agent to, to, to let Sean know that Troy planted a bomb before his untimely... Coma. Is that what we're <laughs> yeah. going with now? Is yeah, yeah. yeah he's he bumped coma. his head on the fence. He's in a coma. Okay. Well, I but, thought he but, thought he was dead. But he thinks point. he's dead at this point. Yeah, yeah. he thinks he's dead. But they know that he's in a coma. I guess the bomb is powerful enough to flatten a square mile of Los Angeles, which sounds like a big win in my book. <laughs> <laughs> then dates this movie by saying the fallout will cause more issues than Gulf War syndrome. You guys remember that? That was a thing once. <laughs> yeah. Gulf War Syndrome. I was like, hey, I recognize that, but I don't know what that is. So I guess that's, so I <laughs> guess people like, watching the movie would have known. Yeah, they would have known in 97. It was like people were experiencing fatigue and all sorts of weird like side effects from uh, something that had ha- like fallout that had happened during the war or some sort of like neurotoxin that they had released. <laughs> Sean freaks the fuck out in a cagier moment than the usual cagey moment and grabs the other FBI guy in the room while screaming for Pollock's Troy. <laughs> <laughs> biblical, the biblical plague that LA... Ah! Ah! Where is... Where is Pollock's Troy? 
<laughs> it really freaks out in that moment. By Grabthar's <laughs> hammer, Pollux is being interro- interrogated. <laughs> by by Grabthar's hammer Pollux is being interrogated where they ask him about the bomb plans he had on his laptop and Pollux says um is it a crime to look at historical documents (laughs) (laughs) sorry these galaxy quest quotes are probably too deep of cuts for our audience but uh, he sounds just like Mathazar for no discernible reason in this film if you haven't seen Galaxy Quest, I suggest you turn this off and go watch it. Both the <laughs> yes. film and our show, because they're better than both combined mm-hmm. times 100. 100%. <laughs> Pollux waves at Sean with his pinky, like the little weird fuck that he is. <laughs> and Sean says he needs about 10 minutes alone with him, so I guess that the pinky worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be inside of you. No. (laughs) The other way around. Oh, my God. (laughs) Sean's boss, Lazaro, pops in to tell him he's not going to evacuate L.A. on his hunch that Troy triggered the bomb, even though Sean seems to have pretty concrete evidence that the uh, bomb exists. Um, So he freaks out on him and says, just run the goddamn bureau any way you like. I'm really starting to see why Sean is so successful. He seems like a really level-headed guy. (laughs) Throughout this whole movie, he's just as crazy as fucking Caster is. I guess that's why. Yeah, like, the that's part of the point. Takes crazy mm-hmm. to find crazy. Sean tells CCH Pounder that the only person Pollux would talk to about the bomb is his brother, who is dead. So I guess we're going with he's dead now from hitting that fence, right? Anyway, she has information. He doesn't, even though she seems to report to him. Later, we find out, find out that he's next in line to run the FBI, but he doesn't know about this. Never mind. Never mind. <clears throat> Who is she? What, is, what does she do? What is her job? Her and Tito, what do they do? <laughs> oh, Tito. I, yeah, that was kind of weird. Tito, I thought, I thought Tito was like his partner for a long time or something because yeah, they're, like, they're really close. Yeah, but, but he knows all about this whatever the fuck this institute is at the same time. Archer doesn't. (laughs) Archer doesn't. He's like second in charge of the FBI in Los Angeles. Yeah, he's the head of this entire task force and doesn't know about this thing. But you got to remember, there's a counter-terrorist organization that's so top secret that they can't get anything done because (laughs) nobody can know about them. (laughs) LAPD intelligence, if there is such a thing. (laughs) She takes him to the Walsh Institute, which is somehow a hundred years in the future when it comes to medicine. She shows him Castor Troy, who is still alive, but in a coma without a single guard surrounding him since he's a vegetable. (laughs) Then she puts out a cigarette on his arm, which probably triggered his return to consciousness since I'm guessing it reminded him of his mom. (laughs) Just see Jack Nicholson in drag, like putting a cigarette out on little Castor Troy. (laughs) Castor, you gotta sit down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I guess I should call CCH Pounder by her character name, even though I don't think anybody ever says it, but her name is Hollis. Hollis. Hollis asks Sean, what if you could walk into Erwan prison and give Pollux a big brotherly hug as Castor Troy? He looks at her like she's fucking stupid because that sounds like the <laughs> dumbest possible premise for a cheesy, over-the-top action movie, but no. Unfortunately, she's 100% serious. <laughs> Dr. Walsh pops in the room and tells Sean they can alter people's faces and vocal cords and even 3D print a new ear for that gay guy from American Psycho. Did you notice that was the gay <laughs> <laughs> What medical wonders. They can he do pr- that now, though, by the way. Mm-hmm. Can they? Yeah. Like they can 3D, 3D print, print a, an yep. ear? It's mm-hmm. still like... Transplants. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, it took almost... What, 30 years after this? Yeah. <laughs> but they can do it. It's in its infancy. Maybe they were inspired by Face Off. They definitely were. <laughs> <laughs> he proposes they remove his face and put Caster's, Caster Troy's face on his body. Yep. And they'll change his hairline, body hair, and even make him less fat. <laughs> <laughs> and presumably swap their penises. 
<laughs> every I mean, well, it's been a while. It's been two months. She otherwise, so, well, like. some stuff in the movie doesn't make sense later on. But <laughs> <laughs> it's been two months. She forgot what it felt like. <laughs> I don't remember that mole. <laughs> <laughs> They'll even use science to put a state-of-the-art morphogenic template on his skull so his <laughs> Jay Leno looking chin will look more like <laughs> Nicolas Cage's somehow magically did they like shave off the yeah, bone right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the whole time this is going on Sean looks at these guys like they're idiots and says he'll do some crazy shit like using actual interrogation tactics to get the gang to talk but Hollis is having none of that stupid bullshit <laughs> Tearing his face off. That's the only way that we're going to stop this bomb. I love how smug she is in every scene. Like, mm -hmm. of course, sure, that'll work. <laughs> you know, actual police work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next, we see Sean cause the guy who got his ear chopped off in Reservoir Dogs to shit his pants from <laughs> interrogating him, uh, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that was that was the guy who's like rip my fucking ear off. <laughs> he threatens Caster's ex by saying he'll have his, her son put in a foster home if he doesn't talk. So she shits her pants. I don't know. I <laughs> uh, can't wait to meet that kid. That kid is my favorite part of the whole movie. <laughs> Your fucking description. Of it is so <clears throat> Next, he questions the guy who directed the Notebook. <laughs> who sports a uh, goofy coat and a shaved head. He gets real intimate with this guy and talks to him from about two inches from his face like he's about to get shorty out of his pants. <laughs> but before he can, this guy, who is the previous girl that's on question's brother, just so we're clear, um, <clears throat> asks him how his dead son is, which causes him to throw the guy to the floor and put a gun barrel in his eye socket. Uh, quick fact, Nick Cassavetes actually surprised John Wu by shaving his head for this role. And Wu said it was exactly what he wanted. He didn't even ask him to do it, but he just showed up with a shaved head. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Can't possibly be a bad guy in a movie unless you got a shaved head, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's got <laughs> to look evil. And he dresses like a fucking... It's like a <laughs> cross between like a Muppet and a Bond villain. <laughs> Uh, this guy's named Dietrich. Uh, Dietrich tells Sean that he heard something about the 18th of whatever month it is. Well, that's all he knows. Sean asks Hollis if she's told anyone about the ridiculous face swap idea. And she says it's a black bag operation. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that that's a thing. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> so no one can know about it, including the head of the FBI or Sean's wife. No one could know about it. Only these Convenient. two agents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the entire lab that does it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll get to that. Sean says, what are you asking me to do? Break the law, risk my own neck, and put all the people who love me and trust me in the dark? And with like two seconds of thought, he says, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, the only people at the FBI who know about this operation are these two agents... We are a, a Hollis and Tito. Tito. <laughs> Coming this fall, the CW. Hollis, Hollis and Tito. And Tito. Hollis and Tito. <laughs> Those are the only people who know about this, okay? All right. So we're clear. The whole FBI. <laughs> Nobody knows about this except for these two people and now yeah. Sean. As if they've been prepping for this exact scenario for yeah. how many years? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> like, why do they even know about it in the How first place? How did they even find out? Oh, okay. Anyways, <laughs> Sean heads home to his wife to tell her he's uh, going back undercover. She tries to initiate some sexy time, but Sean shuts her down when she strokes the scar on his chest, which was the uh, exit wound for the bullet that killed his son. <laughs> Sean laments that if the bullet was only an inch over, he would have died instead of his son. I hate to break it to him, but if that kid knew how many creepy face gropes he avoided, he might have volunteered for that bullet. <laughs> I'm glad we've moved past the dead baby jokes. 
<laughs> <We're> really matured. <laughs> Eve tells Sean that everything will magically be better now that Caster Troy is out of their lives and gives him a taste of his own face groping medicine. <laughs> what in the goddamn hell is with this family? What is that? Oh, I don't know. It's not a normal thing anybody does, so I don't know why it no became one, a linchpin no. for this the emotional through line of this movie. Yeah, he did. He's just going to do uh, there. <laughs> He's back. Yeah, you, you can you can insinuate that you're <laughs> you're being face groped by me right now. You too can now feel like you're being face groped. <laughs> Our audience has been face groped. She, he breaks the news to her that this thing with Troy won't fully end until he does one last thing. We cut to him having sex with her while she wears a Nicholas Cage face mask. <laughs> <laughs> no wait that's just a fantasy that i had <laughs> triple to having sex with his wife was nick cage's, nick like, cage's face, face mask like halloween mask on <laughs> oh my god it's so weird i love it <laughs> eve gets super upset uh when he's saying he's going on one last assignment and his usual tactic of stroking her face like a fucking weirdo doesn't work this time around. She tells him to GTFO, so he heads to get his face torn off. <laughs> At the Institute, Sean asks the doctor to put the scar back uh, that is a daily reminder of his dead son because it's important to him. And the doctor says, sure, because this guy can do literally any magic medical procedure the script calls for. Sure, I just put the scar back. All right. Yeah. I can do anything to your body, sure. Next, we see two creepy wax cadaver-looking figures of Sean and Castor pushed next to each other in an operating room. <laughs> they saw off Sean's face with a laser and then suck it off his skull with a vacuum cleaner attachment. <laughs> you know how faces aren't attached to anything underneath? They're just, you just pull them right, you just cut around the edges, just pull it right off. <laughs> They dump his face in some of that blue water barbers keep their combs and scissors in. <laughs> and it just kind of floats to the bottom like a rubber Halloween mask. No blood. Just just like the mask. It's just the guy who wrote the mask. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We all wear masks. <clears throat> they give him a nice little haircut inches away from his exposed skull, but it's cool because they put some gauze on it or yeah, something. Yeah, it's super sanitary. <laughs> Cutting just, hairs all over. Just give him my haircut right there. This gaping, missing face wound. How the fuck did they make uh, Caster's hair grow out to be John Travolta's hair? <laughs> Though just uh, lasers. Plugs. Just, just plugs. Yeah, they said they were going to use plugs, um, mm -hmm. at least on Sean's body to make him look like Caster. I don't remember. They mentioned plugs uh, they and just... micro plugs for the body hair and stuff. Okay. So. Well, they cut away they when uh, when cast, actual caster gets turned into Sean. Just take a fucking guess when his face is ripped off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then they use a laser to change his hairline because if movies have taught me anything, lasers are magic. <laughs> just <laughs> lasers. Just any, if there's something you don't know how it would work, just laser. Lasers. They cut Caster's face off and add in a jump scare of Caster with his eyes open on the monitor for no goddamn reason. <laughs> And slap it on Sean's body, which fits on him perfect after they smush it around like Play-Doh for a second. <laughs> uh, Sean wakes up, and to his horror or delight, he's been transformed into Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Weird reaction. Uh, he takes it pretty well. He smiles to himself in the mirror, then smashes it and says, Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Sean! Before Tito reminds him he's Sean Archer. I, I don't think that's why he was upset in that scene, Tito. <laughs> Obviously, he's upset because he sees himself as the man who killed his son, not because he doesn't know who he is. <laughs> or does he? You're Sean Archer. Don't You forgot who you were because we did a surgical procedure. <laughs> I don't know. This movie's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> he says he wants them to take Castor's face and burn it when this is all said and done before noticing he still sounds like John Travolta next we I'm see Nicolas Cage oh 
<laughs> ah, jeez. Next, we see Nicolas Cage singing "Go Grease Lightning, Go Grease Lightning." Go. <laughs> Sorry, it's also a fantasy that I had. They use a computer called a Tektronics TLA seven hundred four that looks like it's well straight out of the nineties to create a chip that perfectly mimics Nicolas Cage's voice, which the doctor explains any pressure, sharp blows, or even a violent sneeze will cause it to become dislodged. Even though he literally gets punched in the throat in every other scene for the rest of the movie. <laughs> Until the script calls for it. Until the script yeah. calls for it. And then he just kind of like goes like this and he's he's able to talk normal for a second. <laughs> Which, if you watch that final scene, after he damages the chip, he, he goes back to being Cage, and then yeah. Travolta, then Cage. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he makes him say, Peach, I could eat a peach for hours. <laughs> In order to train his new voice microchip. <laughs> this movie was 100% meant to be a comedy from the very beginning. There's nothing you could tell me to convince me otherwise. This was supposed to be a comedy. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous, man. <laughs> it's now six days until the bomb goes off, so they send him straight to prison so he can get Roblox Troy <laughs> to give up <laughs> the location of the bomb. <laughs> Sean is transported by a helicopter but stops to rub his face on the wall for a minute since it, it itches. It itches, dude. Yeah. And then Tito helps him scratch it by just kind of like rubbing it. Yeah, just rubbing his thumbs. It's like that's that's like Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> Maybe that's where they got the idea. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Maybe that was the whole like start to this story. It was like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> Nick Cage, John Tr- <laughs> Caster's mom be uh, Robin Williams. In drag. <laughs> it's just literally Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello. Uh, Margaret Cho and the guy from American Psycho with his uh, fresh new ear remark Sean will be pissed to know Caster Troy is alive. And when Shaw gives, Sean gives them a look, American Psycho guy goes, Patrick, you're sweating. <laughs> American, Mar- American Psycho fans out there. <laughs> but he's, he's like picking out the new card and he shows the card and mm-hmm. Paul Allen's card is much better. And then that guy goes... Patrick, are you okay? <laughs> You're sweating. You're sweating. <laughs> <clears throat> over at Erwan, however the fuck you say, over <laughs> over at Erwan Prison, we finally get the, what uh, we all came for. <laughs> president of Turkey. Over at Erdogan Prison. (laughs) Over at Erdogan Prison, we finally get what we all came here for. Nicolas Cage is stripped butt naked, and we get a nice shot of his chest hair and a slow pan down his Ghost Rider abs. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I know I paused it. I don't know about you guys. A guard lets him know that the Geneva Convention is void in this prison. (laughs) Amnesty International doesn't know that they exist. And then he puts him in a pair of magnetic boots that stick to the ground whenever the guards need to keep the prisoners in line. (laughs) Quick fact, those are literally the same magnetic boots from the Goombas in Super Mario Bros. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it just reused the, pro- pro- <laughs> the fucking Goombas. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> fucking uh, incredible. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> this prison is like a Bond villain lair meets the prison from the running man. It's like super uh, 90s futuristic, but also a grimy shithole with some like 1984 style nature shows playing on a huge screen accompanied by elevator music. <laughs> It's like the Which stuff I guess they play is, in Soylent Green when they're executing yeah. people. The, those <clears throat> nature videos to calm them down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's supposed to keep them docile, but I think that would have the opposite effect. Like <laughs> nature documentaries and elevator music all day would just cause anyone to go insane. I think they make that joke in the movie. <laughs> I, think, I think they do. <laughs> make remarks like it's like they want us to kill people or something like that. <laughs> Coppola quick facts here. A um, <clears throat> bunch of them here. The name of the uh, floating prison, which isn't actually floating in this, um, it's just a oil rig, right? Some know. of those float. Yeah. Which okay. I learned recently. Erewhon is a simple anagram of nowhere, 
Just, just, just call it nowhere. Jeez, I don't know. <laughs> Erewhon Prison is a reference to Samuel Butler's Erewhon, uh, about a city in which the protagonist is imprisoned and in which many of the normal rules of society are reversed. Uh, the original script was actually mostly set in the prison, which actually makes sense. I think it would have made more sense to, to, to set more of it in the prison. But anyways, the writers called it Birdman of Alcatraz in the future. <laughs> in it, some prisoners hung upside down from ceilings with their boots and they were like collecting IV fluids. It just feels like something from an anime. Another fun fact is some of the prisoners are actual ex-convicts recruited by John Woo because he – Wanted real people for his very realistic story. <laughs> Fair similitude. It's very important. Why? Why was that necessary? They were cheap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they probably cheap were. extras. <laughs> Work release program. And just <laughs> <laughs> Sean spots Pollock, who is just as off-putting as ever. Pollock, sorry. Pollock. Kevin, Kevin Pollock. <laughs> Kevin Pollock. <laughs> nice to see uh, prison hasn't changed him one bit because uh, he's, yeah, he's he's just as weird as ever. I bet he's really popular in prison. <laughs> <laughs> no, you they're creeped out by him. They don't oh, my God. Him. This is going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, we see the Punisher yeah. in the prison population. A terrible wig. <laughs> who uh, so recognizes bad. Caster Troy, but Caster <laughs> walks right by him. Original Punisher, not Netflix yeah. Punisher slash Who's, Shane from Walking Dead. The villain in The Punisher was played by John Travolta. Travolta. Yeah, there we go. It all connects. He gets Caster's attention and Sean recognize him, recognizes the Punisher as uh, Burke Hicks, who he busted for stalking a U.S. Attorney General. Burke says, word was you got wasted. And Sean says, you want to see what wasted looks like, little man? And the entire population of this maximum security prison full of criminals so evil, they have to be kept on an oil tanker in the middle of the ocean go, ooh, <laughs> like an audience watching a sitcom. <laughs> or a high school cafeteria. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody there presumptuously had to have done something really terrible to get there, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is like, like their- senator? Yeah, this is like the, the new version of Alcatraz, except- yeah. Off the books, and mm-hmm. nobody knows about it except prison. for Tito it's and a, Hollis. <laughs> it's a black bag site. Yeah, it's a black, ba- black, black bag black operation. Bag prison. <laughs> <laughs> a different dude attacks Sean or Caster. What the fuck should we call this guy? <laughs> just, just Sean. <laughs> I'll just go with Sean. The guard lets the inmates beat the shit out of each other for a little while this guy wails on Sean, throwing him around, punching him in the stomach, bashing him in the face, and throwing him to the floor. So I guess it's safe to say that that voice microchip is just <laughs> toast. <laughs> nope, totally fine. <laughs> Caster looks around bewildered for a second before locking eyes with Pollux, which triggers a spastic fit of some sort. <laughs> He smiles crazily and opens his eyes unnaturally wide before beating the guy who jumped on him with his Goomba boots. (laughs) Hits him with a tray while saying, you watch your fucking mouth. You watch your fucking mouth. He does a call back to the opening scene. He beats the dude up for a bit and screams, I'm cast Troy, with a crazed look on his face that occasionally switches to a kind of laughing, crying... He's real conflicted in this moment. <laughs> I love that look on his face, though. That, like I said, that look is uh, my my feelings towards this film. Like <laughs> just like crying. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> like it's fun, but also painful at the same time. Oh, man. As he's about to kill a guy with a lunch tray, I guess he remembers who he really is, even though absolutely nothing about him is different mentally. Now that the fun is over, the guards lock down the prison and zap Sean with a cattle prod. Oh, I'm being lifted. I'm the baby now. (laughs) (laughs) We should all do that to each other at the same time. Uh Yeah, well... Or whenever oh, the script, whatever yeah. it happens in the movie. 
over at the completely unguarded Walsh Institute, <laughs> where one of the most dangerous criminals alive is in a coma. The real Caster Troy suddenly wakes up bolt upright like he's Michael Myers and unwraps his bloody head. He takes a couple fingers to his face and realizes it has been completely repa- replaced with raspberry jam. <laughs> <laughs> Only one man will give me the raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> he lets out a few goofy screams. <laughs> so once he spots Sean's face in a jar conveniently placed near his hospital bed. <laughs> I mean, I guess he gets up and he it's walks. Not a very big that. secret lab. He's only got a couple <laughs> like, of rooms. It feels like he just stood up and the face was like in the adjacent <laughs> room. <laughs> Then he makes a couple calls where Nick Cage chews the scenery like nobody's business. They took the switch light for some fucking... But it's cool. <laughs> I like how I did that, like trying to talk without lips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Caster's goons round up Walsh and drag him to the Institute, where faceless Caster is watching a video of the operation while smoking a cigarette despite not having any lips. I don't know how you would do that. Caster says, bravo, like 36 times. (laughs) Bravo. (laughs) Bra fucking bo. Oh, God, this is excellent. Bravo. Bravo while clapping at the doctor's work and then says, take one goddamn guess when the uh, doctor asks him what he wants. Uh, Quick fact, Nicolas Cage didn't want to see the grotesque face makeup, uh, so John Woo hit all of the reflective surfaces on set. (laughs) All right, that's a cool detail. Yeah, I guess. He's got some weird (laughs) hang-ups. I've noticed that about him. Like, there seem to be a lot of things that actually really genuinely kind of, like, frighten him, upset him. (laughs) I was watching Bad Lieutenant, the new, his version of Bad Lieutenant, and he talked about how the city of New Orleans scares him, and he was afraid to go back there, even though he loves it. And it, like, was a place of rebirth for him. I think it was, like, where he he became clean was New Orleans. And Look at all that voodoo there. It's yeah, creepy. I don't know. Um, lifelike dummies of John Travolta and Nicolas Cage were used for the face transplant sequence. Oh, you couldn't tell. Um, <laughs> Adam Tussauds so wax figures. <laughs> Nicolas Cage stated in an interview that he found the dummy of himself terrifying to look at. Same, Nick. Same. <laughs> yeah. Act two. It's about time we had some conflict, wouldn't you say? Over at the prison, Sean asks Pollux for help since he's not firing on all cylinders after being in a coma. He asks Pollux if he's been taking his medication, and Pollux tests him by asking what medication he takes since apparently in this bizarre world John knew was imagining, people perfectly impersonate other humans all the time. (laughs) I mean, to be fair, I'm sure Pollux saw Mission Impossible and wouldn't put it past the FBI to make a mask of his brother's face and use the same weird voice tech to trick him into giving away secrets. (laughs) Didn't even think about that. It's true. (laughs) Sean knows every detail about this dude and his brother since he's been fapping I mean, studying them every day for six years. Which one of these guys is the psychopath again? Uh, Sean or Castro? Castro. Or Castro. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sean asks Pollux why the guy jumped him earlier, and he says Castro had a sex sandwich with his wife and his sister the night he was sent to this prison that no one knows about in the outside world. You had a sex sandwich with his wife and his sister the night he was sent here? Sean then says, we're going to blow up L.A., bro. Ain't it cool? Which is, uh, that was the call back to. <laughs> the cat's knocking stuff down again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a call back to the time the cat knocked down a poster. <laughs> nope. Okay. I, can't do it I was going to say it's a call back to Broken Arrow because it's what Travolta said in Broken Arrow. <laughs> Broken Arrow. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Cat's a real asshole. <laughs> Cat's a bastard, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's over your shoulder knocking Just on so your... everybody knows, that is a 1982 model of Slave 1 that he just casually threw on the floor. <laughs> that I put up there so he couldn't reach it. Well, <laughs> joke's on you. 
Sean gets Pollux to give up the location of the bomb in seconds flat, telling him the bomb is at the LA Convention Center. Sean reveals himself to not be Caster Choi, calls Pollux fucking pathetic. You know, since he gave up the information to somebody who looks exactly like his brother, even though the technology to do such a procedure is absolutely impossible. <laughs> The guards head to Sean's cell where he's smug as hell that the ruse that only took days to set up thanks to medical technology beyond the scope of human imagination worked in seconds flat. <laughs> they tell me as a visitor and who do you think is waiting for him but himself. Dun, dun, dun. Sean Archer. <laughs> Sean Archer, or should I say Castro Troy? Uh, <laughs> Castro. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Archer, or should I say Caster Troy, strolls into Sean's befuddled amazement. Wait, you good looking. You're hot. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. And then explains that he killed the only people who knew about the face swap and burned the Walsh Institute to the ground. He turned Tito into a toast Tito. <laughs> 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 at this point i'm like whoa whoa movie just so we're clear caster found the only two fbi agents who knew about the secret mission even though no one else at the fbi knew anything about it all of the doctors who performed the operation and everyone who worked at the institute and burned them to death to which the movie says he rounded them all up in one night, too. <laughs> yeah. He's got some pretty efficient goons, you know. That's why he's, he's stayed it. off the radar all these years. Is, you know, he's got good yeah. people working for him. He's got, it's, you know, he's got some good goons. Some good goombas. He's got a great recruiting program. <laughs> the goombas. <laughs> the goomba program. <laughs> the goomba program. <laughs> Caster says he torched all the evidence that proves this version of Caster Troy is actually Sean Archer and then lets him know he's headed to Sean's house to rape his wife. Shit gets real dark real quick. <laughs> the guards burst in when Sean tries to choke Caster since I guess they were listening from the next room. Uh, I mean, wouldn't they have heard the that caster is Sean and Sean is caster? It's best not to think about these trivial things and just buckle up for the ride. <laughs> Another throat injury that they yeah both shrug off and it doesn't mess with yeah. their voice box. Yeah, totally fine, yeah, both of them. Yeah, <laughs> their voice are totally normal. Why did they even put that in? I don't. <laughs> Cause it's just because there's that one action. point in yeah the climax At the very where end it switches off <laughs> yeah. after three weeks of punching his larynx <laughs> <laughs> suddenly they choke Sean out and Caster is released into the wicked world where he heads straight to Sean's house. You can really tell what an edgy guy Caster is since he's blasting NXS, the hardest rock band Australia has to offer. <laughs> I need you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real badass, joke. man. <laughs> so speaking of choking, didn't the singer of NXS die from autoerotic asphyxiation? <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> he accidentally drives by his house where his frigid wife is waiting anxiously for him to come home and rub his fingers on her face. <laughs> He checks out his old young woman wife <laughs> and I rapes her like she's Heidi Klum. <laughs> she asks how his vital assignment went and he says, oh, the out of body experience went great. <laughs> or however the fuck he says it. Oh, the out of body experience. <laughs> A sex sandwich. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he tries to... He tries to get kinky with her by calling her a peach. Works every time. But she resists his charms even after he says, I hate to watch you go, but I love to watch you leave. It's like, Great line. It's like a 15-year-old trying yeah. to pick up a girl at a bar or something. I don't know. Not that her husband's acting like a completely different human being. Yeah, yeah. completely different. <laughs> Cast her heads inside and reads Sean's wife's diary where he finds out Sean and Eve haven't had sex in two months. He hears some music and finds Sean's daughter in her panties chatting on the phone and things get all sorts of rapey. <laughs> Drugs, bombs that will level a city, stuff like that doesn't feel even remotely dark when compared to this guy raping Sean's wife and ogling his daughter while looking like her dad. <laughs> Caster accidentally calls her Janie instead of Jamie, then says she has something that he craves and takes a cigarette from her while leaning over her seductively. Just 
all sorts of unsettling. <laughs> he says she'll be seeing a lot of changes around here while blowing smoke rings in her face, and she kind of seems to like the new rapey daddy. <laughs> rapey daddy's fun. <laughs> Over in prison, her real dad tries to figure out how the fuck he's going to get out of this mess while Pollux waves at him with his pinky finger again. Bye, bro. As he's being released. Uh, it seems Sean Archer cut him a deal for turning state's evidence on Caster Troy. That bye, FBI, bro. <laughs> bye, bye, bro. I won't have to now, be using this anymore. <laughs> now that I'm getting out of prison. It was the French tickler. <laughs> Over at the FBI... Pollux dances and sings opera while eating tongue sandwiches. Uh, this movie just gets weirder and weirder. <laughs> Margaret Cho tells Caster she's sorry about Tito, but I guess no one gives a shit about Hollis. And then he says, Oh, hey, shit happens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the head of the bureau pops in and is perturbed that Sean made a deal to have Pollux released. Caster pops in to have a chat with his baby bro, who continues to talk like an alien from Galaxy Quest, saying that... Seeing that face on you makes me afraid my tiramisu might come back up. <laughs> Caster has a similar sentiment, saying, Think about having to look at Sean's dumb nose, hair which I'm guessing they grew out with a laser, and his ridiculous chin every day. <laughs> Quick Big fact. Guy. John Travolta asked the writers if they were making fun of him with the ridiculous chin line. They explained that Caster was such a narcissist he would hate having anyone else, anyone else's face. I do think that they were making fun of sure. his, <laughs> his <Sure>. chin. <laughs> it is a weird yeah, I was, chin. I was watching that. I was like, do you think, uh, I think Travolta liked making fun of his own face <laughs> in that scene? Or was he just, you know, a good sport about it? I was a hot throb. Oh, my God. <laughs> Caster tells Pollux they're going straight and asks him to confess as to the location of the bomb so that Caster can go find it and be the big hero. He heads to the convention center where he groped that choir chick and defuses the bomb after telling the bomb squad to evacuate the building. Over at the prison, they decide to give the inmates a nice little break from the nature channel and instead show a new story about Sean Archer disarming the bomb and saving the city of Los Angeles, where Travolta <laughs> delivers the line, Interception. Now our side's got the ball. Sorry. <laughs> As the real Sean looks on. Fun fact, they gave this script to a very prominent script doctor who did some touch-ups in the summer between fourth and fifth grade. <laughs> like, why, why are they showing that to the prisoners? Like, they- probably just to rub it in Caster Troy's face. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, probably. We cut to Sean in his cell crying while jacking it, thinking about this guy destroying his life. <laughs> we see Caster embracing the applause of his colleagues at the FBI, unlike the real Sean, while he dances around and apologizing for being an insufferable bore all those all these years. It does look he like he's jacking it in that scene. I don't know. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I'm stuck in here. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he gets a call from the president and his wife and tells his secretary to put the president on hold while he smacks her ass and moans in ecstasy. <laughs> he was he kind of was supposed to do the same like face that Cage did, but he, I don't feel like John Travolta it, quite caught that same level of he insanity. Did not. He did not. It was not the same. At home, Eve shows up to find a candlelit lobster and spaghetti dinner with the beautiful piano strokes of Chopin's Raindrops Prelude, OP28, <laughs> number 15, playing in the background. See, we here at One Cage at a Time are cultured. Eve begins yeah, to notice how different he is. That joke doesn't really is. work if you mispronounce his name. Chopin? Is it Chopin or Chopin? Chopin. Chopin? Or, or Chopin. All right. Chopin? <laughs> Say like Chopin or Chopin. Chopin. Chopin? I don't know how the English say it. Chopin! Oh, fuck it. He begins to notice how different he is all of a sudden. But before she could think about it, Caster Choi just straight up rapes her. Uh, so, okay, I guess we're not super cultured, but uh, we are somewhat. So, do we get some points for that? <laughs> Chopin? Uh, Chopin. Chopin? 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 Is it Chopin? Wants it's probably to get Chopin. Into his wife's Chopin suit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Back in prison, the real Sean asks the Punisher how he can escape from this crazy prison. And he explains the only way to get out is to have his boots removed, which they only do while giving inmates some sort of crazy shock treatment that turns your brains to shit and makes you puke all over yourself. 
So Sean beats up a bunch of guards and they take him straight to the place where they shock you. I mean, didn't that other dude get like three strikes before they took him there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they, was, they said that the thing with, um, with Caster or with Sean earlier was strike number two and you get three strikes before yeah. they... But what he's saying is that guy got to the shock treatment after three strikes. And they sent Caster there. They sent Caster yeah. there like right away. Right away. Or maybe he's on three strike because he had the fight that he also tried to kill uh, oh, Sean good Archer. Point. And then this good was point. him trying to attack a guard. Yeah. That's a good point. I, I didn't expect there to actually be some logic behind that. <laughs> <laughs> they take Sean's boots off and put him in the electric chair where Joe Bob Briggs works as the executioner for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was the Surgeon General from Escape from L.A. <laughs> <laughs> who I think was played by uh, Bruce Campbell. Oh. Yeah. That was Joe Bob Briggs. You know who Joe Bob Briggs is? Let's, yeah. <laughs> was that really him? Yeah. That was Joe Bob Briggs. Really? Fucking weird. <laughs> like, oh. I know he had an acting career, but I didn't really. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> just randomly there. <laughs> Sean tells the guy who just who was just electrocuted and still covered in puke that he didn't sleep with his wife and didn't touch his sister like Pollock said he did and says he knows his wife loves him and is waiting for him. So they might as well get the hell out of here. This is I, good enough for I don't get this. the sense that you can leave this prison, honestly. I, uh, no. This yeah. is forever. Yeah, this is like you're there forever. It seems too easy uh, how they how he gets out. It's like very yeah. convenient that he's yeah. able to like navigate this prison he's never they been in and knew nothing about. And then had to pull something out of their ass to yeah. get out. Mm-hmm. Sparklers. More sparklers. <laughs> he's a lot of sparks, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is good enough for this half vegetable to hop right up and attack the guards. He and Sean beat up the guards and fight their way out of the room while prison guards shoot and miss with every single shot. Sean shoots at a guard who must have been a robot because sparks fly everywhere. (laughs) That is no joke. I think what they were trying to go for was like he hits the railing behind the guy because they like they sort of try to make it seem like he doesn't kill anybody. Yeah. But at the same time, sure seems like he killed a lot of people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah it definitely does seem like he may or may not have killed some people but they kind of play it off like he's just shooting to injure or shooting to deter them mm-hmm. it's ambiguous another guard shoots at sean who's literally just rolling around on the ground in the corner while this guy shoots at him with a machine gun that also seems to only fire sparks <laughs> Sean takes out like five guards with a rolling medical table, then shoots a bottle of sulfuric acid, which kills another guard. I mean, it definitely fucked him up, but I don't know if it killed him. It's It's unclear seeing as how (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's unclear seeing as how Sean is adamant about not killing any of the CEOs. But if he did end up killing these guys, is he gonna get in any trouble for killing them once he once his identity is revealed and he goes back to being Sean Archer. Shoots a or bunch of gonna... FBI guys too. So yeah. yeah. All the other inmates, right. Despite the fact that the guards could have just magnetized the floor, but Sean and the guy covered in puke break into the guard station and kill all of them. But a couple guys, he disables every single locked door in the prison with a couple keystrokes and overloads the system, which causes everything to turn into a sparky firework show <laughs> while pukey gets stabbed and then shot. He falls off a high railing, but Sean grabs him for like a second, and then the dude just falls to his death. The whole prison devolves into chaos as the inmates beat up the guards and sparks fly everywhere for absolutely no reason. It's like Michael Jackson doing a Pepsi (laughs) car. Level sparks showering everywhere. Uh, Sean makes his way outside where he finds that he's on an oil rig in the middle of the ocean. A helicopter shows up because why not? And they open fire on him. Sean runs around the rig getting shot at until a barrel of some sort catches his shoes on fire and he suddenly begins his transformation into the Ghost Rider. (laughs) He finds a nearby minor motorcycle and drives it across the ocean like a ski jet. (laughs) He's ready to to avenge some souls. Oh wait, Maybe that's his his thing is... (laughs) <laughs> his penitence <laughs> hands <laughs> penitence face stroke <laughs> actually he jumps hundreds of feet off the oil rig into the water and somehow manages to remain undetected by the helicopter and eventually swam multiple miles to land <laughs> somehow this is less believable than being able to switch faces with someone. There's also like <laughs> boats circling the thing too. Like they watch him jump mm-hmm. off. It's okay. You know, you could just swim underwater for a while. 
<laughs> I guess for a few maybe miles. Maybe there was a diver down there, like in, when he jumps <laughs> into the Hudson. I guess, or maybe he did the. Uh, he took the sure. David Blaine breath holding class. <laughs> we see Caster hanging out with Sean's wife, who he just raped. Just a reminder, in case you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> they head to the cemetery to visit Sean and Eve's son's grave since it would have been his birthday had Caster not blasted the kid's head off like he was JFK. <laughs> Eve breaks down. Let's just keep picturing the, the scene from Deadfall. <laughs> Dad picking up the money, but it's the kid's <laughs> skull, fragments. His skull fragments. Oh my God. Trying to put it back together. They're everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eve breaks down and Caster looks somewhat remorseful. I'm guessing since he's been forced to think back on that day, he's more mourning the loss of his sexy Tom Selleck mustache rather than the kid. <laughs> Can't blame you, Nick. <laughs> he heads to work where he finds out Caster Choi was killed, escaping from Erwan prison. Uh, I mean, he must have died since it's absolutely ridiculous that he might have survived that jump and then swam in broad daylight miles to shore without being spotted. Anyway, the real caster asks to see Sean's body and Margaret Cho says it hasn't been recovered yet, to which caster says, It hasn't been recovered yet! So I'm guessing he's not buying Sean being dead. <laughs> it hasn't have, been recovered guess. yet! Fucking whoa. Okay. Tell ya. <laughs> Travolta did a way better job doing it. Oh, he, yeah. He went cage. <laughs> Cut to Sean being totally alive and absolutely fine. He steals a car from a valet key box. Uh, what, just so you guys know, movies are why I will never trust my car with a valet. That and because I don't have any money to. <laughs> but it's also nice to see a glimpse of Memphis Reigns before he went legit and dyed his hair blonde for gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> he heads to the hospital his wife works at, calls her from the car phone, and warns her that the man she thinks is her husband is an imposter and to take Jamie and head to her mother's. She, of course, dismisses him and hangs up, so he just leaves. Uh, like, what was the point of him going to the hospital in the first place if he <laughs> doesn't even go inside? That's how phone works. You know, you, <laughs> you just have to get close to the place you're calling. <laughs> it's like a walkie-talkie. You got to be close. Like, was he expecting her to be like, okay, I believe you. Come on up. Yeah, I believe come pick you. Me up. Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> he I'll calls... give you a ride, but I look like the guy who killed your son. <laughs> <laughs> he calls the head of the bureau, but is transferred to, you guessed it, Sean Archer. Sean says, well, if you're Sean Archer, I guess I'm Caster Troy, confirming to real Caster that Sean is in L.A. and now he can send the entire LAPD and FBI to look for him rather than have doubts as to whether he actually survived that completely ludicrous prison escape. <laughs> Sean heads to Dietrich's place. You remember the bald guy who directed the notebook where Dietrich <laughs> is overjoyed to see him since he figured Caster was dead. He asks him, what's the matter since he looks like he just fucked his own mother? I'm not saying he's wrong, but I think if I fucked my own mom, I'd have a slightly different look on my face. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I fucking hate that you making me say this. <laughs> but I think if I fucked my own mom, I'd have a slightly different look on my face. Thanks to the mirror above my bed, I know exactly what face I make when I... You know what, guys? Never mind. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dietrich has a pretty sweet pad, really nicely decorated, tasteful yet elegant with all sorts of people milling about having a great time. I half expected Mohammed Benir to offer him some tea. <laughs> Sean is welcomed into the group with some Coke, a couple sexy girls, his custom gold guns and his weird mall ninja box, some Alka-Seltzer that makes him a little loopy. All in all, you couldn't ask for nicer people to hang out with. Actually, it's uh, shit's so good it makes your dick hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Dietrich says about it. <laughs> and it's just a little blue pill, so maybe it was just Viagra. Yeah, yeah maybe. Probably. <laughs> just partying on Viagra. This party's so good it'll so take your tits take off. Take your tits off. <laughs> <laughs> take your face off. <laughs> 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 he asked Dietrich to help him get Sean Archer and when Dietrich asks why he doesn't just leave the country Sean responds by saying Sean Archer damn it <laughs> <laughs> he then gives this room full of bad guys his own home address where his wife and daughter are currently at as well as the code to his security system he says he knows so much about Sean Archer because he sleeps with his wife and then gives a 
fun little sad cry smile that turns into full on hysterical laughing. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite cage face in the whole movie. You really went on. There, there was a wide range of emotion in that, like, 20 <laughs> seconds of that look. They ask what they'll do once they have Archer, and he says he would like to take his face off. Teacher Cass, you want to take his face off? And Sean answers, yes, his face off. So Teacher says, the face off? They keep fucking saying face off for 15 minutes until John Woo appears on screen pulls down his pants spreads his cheeks to reveal face off written on his butt cheeks except O isn't an O if you get what I mean (laughs) Sean heads to a room where he sucks down some water from the tap for a minute then points the gun at the mirror over and over like a crazy person before saying I'm not me I'm me not me me caster archer (laughs) <laughs> he's having he the same mental breakdown that, like, <laughs> yeah, that Evan Lake was having <laughs> Croc Croc <laughs> is gone me caster <laughs> Cornish Cornish <laughs> caster <laughs> suddenly he realizes someone else is in the room with him which turns out to be Dietrich's sister slash caster's ex so he smiles at her in a toy Totally natural way anyone would greet a long lost love by grinning ear to ear like the Joker while his eyes bulge out of their sockets while he turns around creepily slow to greet her and cocking his head back and forth, you know, because he's on drugs. So he's just. It's just kind of kooky. It's the other one of the Nick Cage meme faces. That see. <laughs> yeah. Amazing if he was. Kiss one. He was like too late, too late, too late, <laughs> too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> <laughs> she seems thrilled to see this nutcase and punches him in the face. Can't blame her. Back at Sean's lovely home in the suburbs, Caster calls his brother, who ha- who was being kept prisoner by the FBI last time we saw him, on a cordless landline phone to tell him that once they get the full resources and protection of the government to help them get rid of all their rivals, they'll be set. And maybe he can get his face back. Wasn't there only like one doctor in the world that could do that surgery <laughs> and didn't Caster burn him alive? So how the fuck does he plan on getting his face back? That was my question uh, through the whole thing. It was just like... So are there like multiple people who can do this thing? <laughs> I guess. I guess. Turns out, yes. <laughs> I guess if you're a plastic surgeon, <laughs> DC's you can do it. best surgeons just come. Wouldn't in. they get LA's best plastic surgeons? <laughs> to make more sense. D- the DC was FBI though. You know, those are know. those are FBI agents. <laughs> yeah, a- a- FBI not, doctors. <laughs> Why do you need surgeons? You just need to get a gay Romanian guy in a hotel and <laughs> make your face look great. <laughs> Some makeup. God damn it. <laughs> a lot of callbacks to that movie that nobody watched. Nobody and probably watched. didn't even watch the episodes <laughs> that, that, we, that did. we did about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're about to have some fun here, gentlemen. <clears throat> Caster spots Sean's daughter pull up with some dude in a Corvette. And I have to say, it's nice to see Danny Masterson playing against type and really getting into the role of being a creepy rapist. <laughs> A role he would later master in life. <laughs> Caster I spots Sean's. <laughs> Caster, <laughs> Caster spots Sean's daughter pushing Hyde from that '70s show off of her and kicks out the window of his Corvette. He grabs Hyde out of the car, kicks him in the nuts while screaming, "Here you go, honey. You see what happens? You see what happens, honey? You see what happens? This is what happens, honey." You see what happens, honey? You see what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps? This is what happens. This is what happens. You see what happens, honey? (laughs) Caster then tells him to say he's sorry before throwing him to the ground. I'm guessing Danny Masterson's victims play the scene on constant loop while plotting his death. Jesus. God. It's just like, you can't even even write jokes about it. It's... (laughs) It's real life. 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's all we have to say about that. <laughs> Having dispatched the wannabe real rapist, actual rapist, Caster Joy offers Sean's daughter some fatherly advice. <laughs> he says, dress up like Halloween and ghouls will try to get in your pants. Then he gives her a cigarette and says she hasn't been the same since he shot her little brother. <laughs> then he tells her she's hiding behind someone else's face. <laughs> Get it? Hoping she wouldn't feel any pain. <laughs> you haven't been the same since I shot your brother in the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then he asks her if she has protection since he wants his chance to rape her. No, wait. That was earlier. <laughs> Now he's a good guy, I guess. Uh, anyways, he gives her a sweet-ass butterfly knife he bought at the mall ninja shop while he was purchasing his fancy card box he keeps his gold guns in. Then he tells her how to sever a would-be rapist femoral artery, and she gladly takes it as he kicks back and says to himself, I am the king. Back at so Dietrich's place. Fucking stupid. <laughs> Why? <laughs> so fucking, so fucking movie stupid. Back at Dietrich's place, Sean wakes up and nearly shoots Sasha, the woman who knocked him out in the face. John Woo gets one goofy face closer to his Nick Cage goofy face quota for the film as Sean looks around the room with a wide eyed look on his face for a minute. Sasha gets right down to business, pulling Sean's pants off and prepares herself for a night of tongue suck it. <laughs> she then tries to get him to leave and he says he's not going anywhere. So she jumps on top of him two seconds after saying, what do you expect me to jump on top of you after all this time? <laughs> We see Pollux outside watching Sasha and Sean through a telescope as if he's the crocodile watching some teenagers getting it on inside Willy's Wonderland. <laughs> he calls Caster and says, Um, you are our only hope of catching Sean so they can go legit or whatever the fuck their plan is. <laughs> Sean rejects Sasha's advances and she tells him to leave since she will lose her son if the FBI finds out he was there. This chick is, uh, this chick's kind of confusing. Uh, she's sending a lot of mixed signals. <laughs> Sean tells her he regrets doing all the absolutely batshit insane things Caster does on a minute to minute basis. And her son runs into the room. So if her son was right outside a see-through glass door that was unlocked this whole time, like what would have <laughs> happened if they, you know, uh, just ah, fuck it. never mind. <laughs> her son is either on the spectrum or the feral kid from road warrior. Because he looks around the room with completely vacant eyes while sporting a haircut dumber than the bowl cut Sean's son had before his untimely demise. <laughs> he hardly says a word before grabbing one of Caster's gold guns off the bed and pointing it right at Sean's face. <laughs> Sean is shocked to find out this kid is Caster's, so he repays the favor his longtime rival paid him. Takes the gun and shoots the kid in the head. <laughs> no, wait. Sean embraces this weirdo and does his patented finger rape of the kid's face while Caster's son gives him a thousand yard stare. Just nothing going on behind those creepy black doll eyes of his. <laughs> She's got eyes like a doll, like doll's <laughs> eyes. <laughs> doll's eyes. <laughs> Apparently this cabbage patch doll looking freak reminds him of his own son. So he's over the moon in love with him immediately. <laughs> Sorry, I love that line. <laughs> cabbage patch doll looking freak. It's the hair and the eyes, everything. Cabbage patch doll. <laughs> uh, then Sean has a mini freak out where he calls him Michael over and over before the FBI, who has been getting into position this whole time, shoot their way into Dietrich's chill pad. They open fire on a room that clearly has a little kid in it and shit goes nuts. Now, normally I would say this whole scene is super unrealistic. Like, why would the FBI just start blasting from across the street? But then I remember Waco and this all seems plausible. <laughs> they even say, we've got a warrant for your arrest. Like, as they bust it and start shooting everybody. <laughs> as they just start blasting. I mean, why would they just automatically shoot to kill every person in the entire <laughs> building? It's crazy. No-knock raid, man. <laughs> <laughs> No-knock raids. That's how they go down. <laughs> but they do actually put a line in there saying, we got a warrant for your arrest, like, as they're opening fire on everybody. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sean, Sasha, and the human Chucky doll die for cover while most of the bad guys just kind of saunter around since they all know the FBI doesn't shoot with real bullets, just guns that fire sparks or whatever. <laughs> Sean uses his opportunity to connect with the vacant shell of a human, Caster's son, 
and says, how did you get to be so brave? How did you get to be so brave? <laughs> Before putting some noise canceling headphones over his ears and cranking somewhere over the rainbow. Since that is what, you know, it's most important when 30 men with machine guns are firing into the room you're currently in. <laughs> Fun fact. The scene of Adam listening to Over the Rainbow on his portable headphones was John Woo's idea and not part of the original script. Paramount Pictures actually refused to finance that extra scene. John Woo had to use his own money to make it happen. He was later paid back when the film turned out to be uh, profitable. So he had to pay for the rights for Over the Rainbow? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, it's a different version, so I think it's... You know, when you uh, hear different versions of songs and you're always like, why don't they just use the original versions? Because they only have to pay the... The distri- like the person who has the rights to the song, not the actual artist or the studio. Wow. So then they get some <clears> other <throat> artist to do it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they get someone else to do it. So it's cheaper. You know, you still have to license the song, but it's way cheaper. Interesting that he was so like diehard. Yeah, what a weird hill to die on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's oh, got to be over the rainbow. Over the rainbow. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a like, it's not a very long scene. It's pretty, pretty short. It's only like 20 seconds of him listening mm-hmm. to Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Crucial, crucial to the film. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, the FBI swings into the building with reckless abandonment, firing machine guns at anything that moves. Dietrich takes out a couple of FBI guys with a shotgun, including one that is just sitting in a chair for some reason. (laughs) (laughs) He gets pretty upset when he realizes his place is getting fucked up, which makes Caster laugh since he overheard him from the rooftop of the adjacent building. Uh, I don't know if that was... What's supposed to be happening, or if it's just John Woo? I think cute. they just wanted to cut to something like he's laughing at the situation, but the, it, yeah, <clears throat> but it's right after he says, Man, my place is getting fucked up, <laughs> yeah, or maybe that's his way of telling us we need to laugh at that joke. I don't know, Who knows? yeah, he's I think so. <laughs> <laughs> what was with Sean the guy King. sitting in the fucking chair? Did you notice that? It's just like a I, guy sitting in a chair and know. then they shoot him in the chest, and yeah, falls, falls uh, off the I railing. <laughs> he must have got knocked into it, but they. Didn't show him getting knocked. Out? I don't know. I feel like they oh, sh- like one guy was coming down and he shot him with the mm-hmm. shotgun. Maybe that was the guy. He was just in his chair <laughs> next. And I don't know. It was pretty clever of John Woo to because uh, all of the FBI guys are on wires. So it's like yeah. they didn't have to edit out the <laughs> yeah. wires in this. <laughs> They're all dropping in. <laughs> Brilliant from everywhere. Somehow. <laughs> Sean kicks an FBI guy he probably worked with through a window and bashes him in the face. Sasha kills some of Sean's FBI friends with a machine gun, and then Sean shoots an FBI guy in the leg. Again, we have to ask, is he going to get in trouble for ruining or killing <laughs> FBI agents and prison guards when he goes back to being himself? Because he's fucking some people up. John Woo uses the kid listening to Somewhere Over the Rainbow as a fun way of showing the mayhem that will surely scar this obviously already mentally challenged kid for the rest of his days. <laughs> we see people being violently killed in slow-mo, bodies flying through the air, and you guessed it, lots and lots of sparks before finally Sean does a slow-mo somersault to save the boy from a deranged FBI agent who almost shoots a little kid. <laughs> that whole setup, too, to get to that point, they're like, passing the kid off like he's a fucking football and then they just leave him in the middle of the fucking room while people are shooting left and right what the fuck was the point of that the kid was supposed to hide but obviously there is nothing going on behind his eyes <laughs> he just <laughs> strolled out started pointing at stuff uh, uh, that's daddy <laughs> should have given the kid a gun. He could have pointed it. <laughs> yeah, he could have yeah, joined you know in on the shootout. Yeah, he probably could have killed some people. He wanted to shoot Caster. So. <laughs> I think that's the real face off at the very end. Is <laughs> he shoots? He shoots <laughs> John Travolta in the very end of the movie. <laughs> Well, the real caster choice shows up, and instead of aiming at Sean, he aims straight at his own son for some reason, but ends up killing Dietrich accidentally, and then he just kind of leaves. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what was up. Like, he was trying to kill Dietrich on purpose for he, double the crossing. Him so, but he's Dietrich really was crossing apparently him? a rival because that was like part of this was like he was going after all of his rivals to take them out, and then, uh, then he was going to go oh. legit after that or whatever. Okay. But Dietrich sold him the bomb. <clears throat> but he doesn't need him anymore. Because but he doesn't need him straight. anymore? He's, he's going to be straight? the FBI or whatever. Yeah. I don't know, man. 
Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> I was like, why did he shoot him for some reason? Well, I, f- like he was aiming at his own son, which it, it wasn't he like they know were. That's his son. So maybe right. he was, like, I feel like he kids. did. I feel like he knew, no, but because, the, no, because she's, no, cause cause she was she telling said, him for the first yeah, time, beat your yeah, son. Yeah, she tells him. Oh, she tells son. Sean as caster yeah. that this is your yeah. son. So hmm. he didn't know that was his kid. He never you know, knew throughout the movie, the rest of the movie. As confusing as this is, it's not as confusing as Dietrich then making out with his sister, like <laughs> full on making out with her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I, <laughs> like, I don't know about you guys, but I've never and I will never open mouth kiss any of my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? It's because they're crazy. They're criminals. They're loose yeah. cannons. <laughs> And occasionally they fuck. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so from, oh, yeah, I had to be like, wait a minute, did I miss? Like, that's not her brother. <laughs> yeah, me too. I was like, wait, <laughs> this whole time I thought they were brother sister. <laughs> I saw something about Nick Cassavetes. Uh, he improved that, and he wanted you know. He, and then John Woo was like, oh, that's perfect because they're these crazy dudes, you know, crazy people. He just really wanted to kiss Gina Gershon. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Can't blame him, I guess. <laughs> fucking A. <laughs> Anyways, then Dietrich dies thanks to a bolt hole in his neck. Obviously not John Travolta, crouching tiger, hidden dragon, runs along the walls while Sean tries to shoot him. <laughs> he and Caster end up back to back with a mirror between them, and Caster monologues that he doesn't know what he hates wearing worse, Sean's face or his wife like a flesh condom. <laughs> He suggests they trade faces back since you can do that in this reality. And since Sean doesn't want to, they have another face off. <laughs> Get it? Face off. Off. <laughs> they point their guns at each other while looking at the reflections of themselves or the other guy or whatever. And despite shooting directly at each other from like two feet away, both are able to jump out of the way of the other's bullets by doing crazy, unnecessary somersaults. <laughs> They shoot at each other a bunch more times before the 3D printed air guy from American Psycho shows up and shoots at Sean with the standard issue FBI rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. <laughs> what Sean the fuck was it? So, uh, okay, so they're raiding this <laughs> compound <laughs> of bad guys and he brings a, a rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah, and it's like a populated building in the middle of a city. <laughs> Okay. Waco. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's the whole like uh, underlying like message of this film is like unchecked, you know, uh, unchecked authority, <laughs> authority yeah. will not stand, man. <laughs> Just going to go <laughs> off the fucking rails. Sean runs away and ends up on the roof where he, we see Pollux, who is still just chilling out on the other roof for some reason. Sean swings on a rope that is suspended by a crane or something between the two buildings because why the hell not? And he knocks Pollux through a skylight. <laughs> what, what was that attached to? Just, just a random rope hanging over the... Th- I mean, it's supposed to be like an industrial building of some sort, but like... <laughs> what Was there know. a crane <sighs> over the top? I don't, Who fucking knows? <laughs> <laughs> he dies, but Sean is fine. Uh, Caster shoots at Sean and then spots his baby bro dead on the ground. He makes out with a gun for some reason. <laughs> then shoots American Psycho guy when he says, Why are you so upset? It's just Paul X Troy. So he Patrick, shoots at the fellow. You're sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so I, think he he was, <laughs> I think he was making out with a gun because he was contemplating killing himself. Really? Like rubbing it on his face. That's, what I, that's what I got from it. Like, he was like. That would have been an interesting way to end the like movie. His brother just died, so yeah. he was contemplating killing himself. Okay, so I don't get this. So he shoots a fellow FBI agent in the head, and there are no witnesses since I guess all the bad guys and FBI guys killed each other or something. <laughs> like, nobody's going to question this. They all just canceled Pollux each other like, out, you know? Yeah, like Pollux doesn't have a gun, and the <laughs> angle would indicate that it came from a lower point. And he's only one. Yeah, I don't know. I guess they just, I get the FBI just sweeps it on the rock, whatever. Just one dead. The terrorist. FBI is firing <laughs> rocket launchers at people. So, <laughs> yeah, that's probably, they don't care too much. I'm glad they're going to give a shit. Family fire. <laughs> Shooting at children and yeah. blowing off the tops of buildings. <laughs> rockets. In a touching moment, we see Caster tie his dead brother's shoes one last time, thus ending the life of the weirdest character in a movie filled to the brim 
with weird characters. Mm, and thank you, two. baby bro. <laughs> act three. It's about time to wrap this thing up. Over at the FBI, Caster is upset despite the fact that he's on the cover of Time magazine <laughs> thanks to his uncanny ability to locate his rival's hideouts. <laughs> uh, why would Time magazine's man of the year be... I don't know, I guess the guy who icon. just stopped, uh, just right. just raided a rival's location. Right, but I guess he did stop a terrorist back yeah. back in the time before a, a week ago. They, yeah, they say I mean, at like, the end that they've only switched faces for a week, but yeah, somehow he ended up on Time Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> also, he's just got dozens of FBI agents killed, so the big boss is a little bit upset. <laughs> Lazaro tells him he's terminating his war on terrorism, and with just a glance, Caster Troy triggers the man to have a heart attack, I'm guessing. <laughs> the movie seems to insinuate that him shooting his boss the stank face somehow <laughs> triggered myocardial infarction. <laughs> Either that, or he's trying to te- it's trying to tell us that Caster Troy is such a whiz at observation that he notices the subtle cues Lazaro is giving off, such as gasping, wincing in pain, and clutching at his <laughs> chest, and brilliantly deduces that he's about to have a heart attack. <laughs> Caster looks out of the windows of his office and luckily every single person of the incredibly busy and populated office seems to be preoccupied so Caster confesses to Lazaro that he's actually Caster Troy and then punches him in the neck and chest which I guess finishes the heart attack I ain't no scientist but uh, yeah, yeah never mind <laughs> where is science doesn't have a place in this movie just... what a confusing way for that guy to die <laughs> Yeah. Jesus, my chest hurts. Wait, you're Caster Troy? Why, well, that's preposterous. Ah, my neck. Ah, my chest. <laughs> <laughs> At Sean's house, real Sean sneaks in without being seen by the cops who are guarding it. And once he's safely inside, he exhales and says, Oh. <laughs> Not sure about you guys, but I do that every time I get home. <laughs> home. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weird. He, he surprises his wife as she gets out of the shower. Real bang up job those cops are doing to protect her, by the way. <laughs> She's, of course, terrified to find the man who killed her son in her bedroom, but rather than scream for help so she can be rescued by the cops just feet away from her in the other room, she just kind of stands there. Sean explains to her that he's Sean and not Caster Troy, while she is surprisingly attentive rather than dismissing this ludicrous bullshit coming out of the face of the man she hates more than any face on Earth. <laughs> also, he kind of shouts, too, during this. Like he gets he left freaks the much. fuck out, dude. <laughs> the cops still don't hear anything and come running. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty common thing. It's all becoming a yeah, completely sma- different person. Smashing of the picture frame hey, he punches and shit. the picture yeah, yeah. oh yeah um, well, it must be pretty common this whole becoming a completely different person who looks sounds and acts completely different from the person they say they are some <laughs> stuff i don't know sean has a wound of some sort from the face off the night before <laughs> and covers a nice piece of silk fabric with his blood couldn't have grabbed a towel or something <laughs> so inconsiderate <laughs> maybe maybe he always hated that Silk thing, and you wanted to. I'm gonna get rid of this (laughs) once and for all. (laughs) He explains the assignment that he went on that he swapped faces with a terrorist, all that jazz, but he does it in a really calm way so she completely believes it. (laughs) Oh, wait, he smacks himself in the face like a psycho, punches a picture of his son, shattering it all over, and sobs like a crazy person while explaining his completely ridiculous story to his trembling wife and probably all the cops sitting right outside the room who could hear all of it. Hey, is that Caster Troy? It sounds like Caster Troy. Tells her to test the blood from the silk fabric he ruined and to test her fake husband's blood since he and Caster had different blood types. And that this will prove to her that he's telling the truth since she's a doctor. Sean comes home after Eve calls the cops and Eve begins to believe the man she's been sleeping with might not actually be her husband since he acts nothing like the wet blanket she's actually married to. (laughs) He tells her Lazaro died and then sits down in the chair turns away from her and holds out his hand to her to come to him like she's a dog. (laughs) So strange, dude. (laughs) Romantic, if you ask me. Uh, (laughs) That night, she pricks him with a super thick needle pen that looks like the size of an ice pick, but I guess it wasn't (laughs) enough to wake him up. It really does look like a... a, The needle's like the size of a pen, like a, a... 
point or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Sticks it in his arm. It's okay. <laughs> that wouldn't wake you up. No, not at all. <laughs> she heads to the hospital without him knowing and tests his blood, revealing that the man who killed her son was in fact, telling the truth. Quick fact, the two main characters' blood types reflect their antagonistic nature. Sean Archer's blood type is O-negative, the universal donor, reflecting Archer's role as a police officer dedicated to serving the community. Caster Troy's is AB-positive, the universal recipient, someone who takes from society without giving anything back. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. Like, is that how people who are AB-positive feel? <laughs> I just take from society without yeah, giving anything leech. back. <laughs> Also, she tests his blood in like this weird, like you test bloods by, uh, yeah. by the, detecting the presence or absence of antigens in the blood and what type your blood type clots if it encounters certain types. Uh-huh. And she just puts it on a slide in like a machine that looks at it like a microscope and then just says, say, be positive. Like, I don't think that's how they do that. That's how science works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wrote you the mask. Science, you know how science guy. <laughs> <laughs> like I was in high school. In a high school science class, I test we tested our own blood type, and it didn't require a <laughs> weird spectrum for her. <laughs> spectogra- spectomogram. I don't know what they're doing. Whatever. Some made up machine. Didn't Words require any easy, of that. are they, Nigel? You just put like Chopin. three drops of blood, and you put Chopin. Chopin. drops of blood. Chopping, <laughs> chopping that piano. <laughs> she looked through a Chopin. A Chopin. <laughs> We're cultured. Uh, <laughs> Chopographer. <laughs> <laughs> Mass topographer. Sean is of course waiting for her in the room hiding in the shadows because this is a movie and he could somehow get into this lab that she's working in. Also, the most wanted man in LA can just stroll into a busy hospital without anybody recognizing him and get all the way through to this lab again, which would presumably require some kind of credentials. To, and to complete silence somehow. Yeah, and then just stand there and wait for his wife to show up. <laughs> I've just been waiting here for four hours, sorry. <laughs> he thanks her for trusting him, and she pulls a gun on him, but he finger rapes her face since no person on the fucking earth does anything like that ever, except maybe the miracle worker. She So she believes it's him. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> He tells her the story of their first date, which sounds just as awful as every other interaction between these two have had throughout the film. I'll spare you the details, but it involves a drunk dentist who fixes the wrong tooth, a priest, a rabbi, and three Jamaican bobsledders. (laughs) She believes him now because no one on earth could have known about those bobsledders and then lets him know that Castor Troy has been having sex with her from sunup till sundown for a week. So she's had to go to the chiropractor three times since he's been knocking her back out nightly. I mean, he's plowing her like it's October and she's been playing. I mean, he's plowing her like it's October and he's been planting potato crops since March. Point is, he raped Sean's wife. Oh, man. Uh, I had to do some research on potato crops to get that joke together. I think it works. Oh. More research than the script writers did in blood typing. <laughs> How to test blood types. Uh, you hmm. plant potatoes in March and then, then harvest them in October. That's all. Yeah. Uh, anyway, fake Sean wakes up to find Eve missing, so he heads back to the hospital where Eve is patching up Sean's wound in a busy emergency room while some guy with dreadlocks screams for someone to give him a cup of water. <laughs> <laughs> Sean explains that Castor Troy is the acting director of the FBI now that Lazaro is dead. Is the FBI based out of L.A.? I, I think it's like D.C. Or something. It's Quantico. <laughs> They're headquartered out of Quantico. But I guess yeah. in this or universe, DC. it's in LA. Yeah, sorry, DC. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess, like, maybe there's separate branches. They have offices. You know, yeah, they have offices oh, all okay. over those states. And then you have local federal agents that work out of there. So I, I think he's now next in line for the LA office, which would be a big deal. I mean, it's a major yeah. city that he's overseeing, but... No. He's definitely not uh, replacing the director of the FBI anytime soon. <laughs> she tells him that Castor won't be guarded at Lazaro's funeral, so that's when Sean should take him out. She says she can keep Jamie away from the funeral, but she has to go or else he'll know something is up. Castor will know something's up. Now it gets, it gets confusing sometimes. <laughs> it's really confusing, man. 
<laughs> yeah, it's confusing a lot of times. It's it's not as confusing when you're watching it, but when you're trying to explain it, it's, yeah, it's it gets confusing. really hard. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Caster shows up at the hospital with Morpheus and Neo from the Matrix for some reason, <laughs> only to find his wife treating Two Face from Batman. <laughs> He explains away, <laughs> busting in, pushing her out of the way, and pulling a sheet off a burn victim's face by saying he was jealous since his constantly on-call doctor wife left without telling him. <laughs> he and his goombas take off. <laughs> so, so he still has his probably wanted for all sorts of crimes henchmen come around with him rather than some FBI agents. And that's not what no one thinks it's weird. Yeah, I... <laughs> I yeah, don't, I don't, don't understand like, that. How does this guy completely integrate with the office <laughs> politics and just work completely works fine in Sean's office with all his coworkers and none of them are suspicious. Next day we see Sean in the suit, you know, since he's going to a funeral that he wasn't invited to since he's a wanted criminal <laughs> with Sasha. <laughs> he asks Sasha about her children of the corn looking son, and they p- make a plan to take Sean Archer down since he killed her brother. Wait, this is getting confusing. <laughs> she tells Sean Archer, who she thinks is Caster Troy, that Sean Archer killed her brother, but it was actually Caster Troy. Got it? <laughs> nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sean goes on to finger rape her face because I guess he's come to care for her, but he stops himself because it's not something a normal person would do. We see this scene juxtaposed with Castor and Eve heading to the funeral where Eve tells him their daughter stole 50 bucks out of her purse and won't even bother to visit their dead son's grave. So why would she care about Lazaro? Plausible. Yeah, I, I yeah, felt that like was a good story. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, she she said that she can send Jamie away. I know. And this was was her story. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Uh, He stops himself like right in the. Oh, (laughs) oh, wait. I guess not. I guess so. Weirdo family that (laughs) would think this is cute and nobody else would. (laughs) All right, guys. So the stage is finally set. Are you ready for the face off to end all face offs? Me neither. Let's bail. (laughs) <laughs> this last 20 minutes is just a gunfight, some doves, and an extremely over the top boat chase. The end. <laughs> All right. We don't have to cover anymore. All right. Let's go. All right. We're done. Nah, I can't Thank you for that. watching one cage at a time. <laughs> <laughs> we have to finish this epic masterpiece with style and sophistication, just the way John Woo did. <laughs> <laughs> Lazaro's funeral is at a tiny, like, Hispanic church. <laughs> On the beach for some reason. <laughs> it seems to have a horrible dove infestation because they're everywhere. Like all over the place. They're just flying in and out. It's probably like pigeon shit all over the altar. And- gotta be. It's gotta be shit all over that place. <laughs> Sean strolls off the beach into the church, has a quick prayer, and then gives an altar boy a picture to hand to Caster. Just gives him the picture of a little boy to an altar boy. <laughs> It's a photo of two kittens next to each other on operating tables. One's a calico with the face of a Bombay, and the other is a Bombay with the face of a calico. The caption reads, Meow's this face off going for you. For me, it's pawful. <laughs> but actually, might, it's a picture. Might be my favorite joke of the whole <laughs> It's a thing. picture of Sean's dead son. Boring. <laughs> Caster crumples it in front of everyone and then sees a dove flying at the back of the church. So I guess that the dove could only mean that Sean is there. It's Confusing. Like the, sun mean, the, the picture means he knows that Sean's he there. He sees no the picture of his son and then he looks to the back and there's a dove flying across. He's like, <laughs> oh, he's so here. He just wanted to throw a <laughs> shot of the dove at you. Service ends. Maybe and Sean leaving, just picked up a dove and threw it. <laughs> we paid for these damn doves. We're using them. <laughs> It's ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Did you ever see that clip of the guy at the funeral who has a dove in his hand and he's like, uh, "Be free, fly away, like oh, this dove," yeah. and then he throws the dove and the dove just <laughs> drops to the ground and slams on the fucking pavement. Oh, if I had wings like this dove, for then why I fly away right, and be at rest? <laughs> yeah, no. be free yeah. and fly away. <laughs> oh my god so because they had doves on set that means they had to bring in the ASPCA or whatever to oversee that no animals were harmed in the making of this stupid shootout <laughs> yeah there were a lot of doves uh, stomped on in that scene 
the service ends, and instead of leaving to call the, the FBI and the LAPD to kill Sean, Caster just kind of waits around until everyone goes home, and then he confronts him. <laughs> they shoot at each other while doing a bunch of unnecessary spins. Neo brings Eve into the church with a gun on her. Then Morpheus shows up with Jamie. I don't know how he found her or tracked her down. But. I don't know. Caster says Sean's son was an accident and wonders why he couldn't let it go. And then things just get all sorts of stupid. <laughs> Sean says no father could let it go. Caster says neither could a brother since Sean killed Pollux. Then Sasha shows up and says neither could a sister. Then she throws Caster another gun and then Neo pulls a second gun. And then Morpheus comes in with a gun. Then the wooden statue of Jesus pulls a gun. <laughs> then an altar boy comes in with a gun and so on and so forth for 20 fucking minutes. The point is, John Woo really likes double pistols. So everybody yes, had to does. have like two pistols Mexican standoff style, like from the office when they do that. They're doing the murder recreation. Yeah. And they're all pointing guns at each other. Anyway, so there's like eight people holding 400 guns on each other. And Caster says, I can't, I can't even do this without my Whee! voice cracking. What a predicament. Whee! What a predicament. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow... There's some vague eye contact, I guess. Sean communicates to Sasha to throw Eve on the ground. And then we see like 47 close-ups of guns going off, people being shot, doves flying, flowers being shot at, etc. That ends with Eve hitting not John Travolta with a chair. <laughs> when all that bullshit is over, Sean's on the ground with Sasha on top of him, while most everyone else laid down on the ground. Morpheus and Neo, we will never... <laughs> Morpheus and Neo will never see Zion again. <laughs> Sasha tells them to take care of their hills have eyes son and then dies while Eve gets jealous or something. Weird. Uh, weird <laughs> shot of her like crying like yeah. he must have had sex with her. Just like I did. Just like I did. <laughs> Caster runs for a gun while Sean shoots at him with both guns blazing since all guns have unlimited ammo in this movie while he does some flips in the air for no goddamn reason. <laughs> You guys remember that John Woo like directed a video game one time? Did he really? <laughs> yeah. Was, I can't remember what it was called, but it was terrible. But all I remember it had like full time and Somersault and the game. Max Payne. <laughs> it really reminded me of it. Was it the Max Payne games? No, it was some other game that was terrible, but I, I can't remember. It's like called un, Unbreakable or Unbeatable or some weird shit. Unplayable. Like <laughs> yeah. Unwatchable. <laughs> Sean finds Jamie outside the church, notices her stupid makeup, and throws her down some stairs. <laughs> she thinks he's Caster, so she runs away from him and straight towards fake Sean, actual Caster, while the two of them shoot like thousands of bullets at each other with her in the crossfire. Eve calls someone at the FBI, I guess, and says, I have something crazy to tell you. They don't believe her because two people completely changing the way they look and sound to take each other's places is fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, I guess that's who she was calling. I don't. I, the I time, think the so. moment I, I think was she like, was calling she Margaret to? Cho, if I remember. <laughs> Probably, yeah. I think that was the character name that she was like. Mm. Judy, yeah. I don't know who fucking cares what her name is. <laughs> Margaret Cho. Sean, I have something crazy to, to tell middle, you. Middle of your action and climax, I guess, just to throw this. We have to explain to. it away mm -hmm, later yeah. on when they're like. Sean, uh, Sean Archer, Sh Sean and Caster fight through a locust sized swarm of pigeons and doves to get each other and their stunt doubles have a good fight. <laughs> Cast Caster crushes Sean's windpipe and suddenly we hear Travolta's voice come out of Nick Cage again. Sean picks up a machine gun and beats Caster with it rather than, you know, just shooting him with it. <laughs> Sean then chokes Caster with the gun rather than you know, shooting him with it <laughs> while saying, die, please, God, die. <laughs> Just really hoping this movie gets put out of its misery and no one has to endure another 20 minutes of really stupid action scenes <laughs> involving miraculously healing, debilitating wounds and boat speed boats for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie comes to her father's aid, pulls a gun and points it at Sean while Travolta's voice comes out of Nicholas Cage, which will never not be unsettling. Honey, don't listen to him, honey. He's not your father. Hear my voice. I'm your father. <laughs> Eventually, she shoots her real dad in the shoulder and the fake one takes her hostage. Uh, remember the shoulder wound because it literally never matters for the rest of the yeah, movie. It's just gone. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's gone. Uh, Except for when she's like, I didn't mean to shoot you at the very yeah. end of the movie. Yeah. Which was um, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's oh dad God. says, Now we're going to find out what's in Papa's bag. Peaches. <laughs> Before licking her face. 
Jamie pulls out the butterfly knife Caster gave her earlier and stabs him in the leg. Caster limps away while Sean shoots at him. And remember the leg injury because it literally never matters for the rest of the movie. It doesn't come up again. <laughs> After she severs his femoral artery with the butterfly yeah. knife the way he taught her. <laughs> it's basically a cartoon. <laughs> Caster shoots a couple of cops, but rather than jump into the car they just got out of, he limps his way down to a marina and gets onto a speedboat after blasting the owner to death. <laughs> I love that dude. I love that. Out of the water. <laughs> Uh, it reminded me of the in dark when they just are uh, dying of the light. Dying when they just the blast the guy in the hotel when they're shooting all the hotel guests. Uh, there's <laughs> yeah. a guy getting out it's of a, just like... a hot tub or something who gets shot a bunch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he fires the machine gun at Sean, which causes half of Santa Monica to explode. <laughs> Some really flammable bait shops in L.A., that's for sure. <laughs> Sean takes off after him on a speedboat of his own it's John Woo's world is like Grand Theft Auto, where people just leave <laughs> untied running speedboats at the dock for everyone to come take. I feel like this is exactly why they got the guy who directed a bunch of, of uh, Miami Vice. Was the, <laughs> the guy, the cinematographer or whatever. Was was, it, was that who it was? Shot yeah. Shot a bunch of Miami Vice. Yeah. Like, that's where he started. <clears throat> that guy shot a lot of stuff, though. <laughs> yeah. uh, they slammed the boats into each other, but rather... <laughs> Then being made out of plastic, fiberglass, or wood like real boats, they're damn near indestructible. <laughs> they shoot at each other from point blank range, but of course miss. But one bullet does cut Sean's fuel line. <laughs> just, just reading this is so stupid. <laughs> Ridiculous. An LAPD boat shows up and like eight guys open fire, but Caster kills every last person on the boat with one spray of his machine gun, which seems to have nearly limitless ammo. <laughs> Sean and Caster bump boats again, and Sean's boat plows into the back of the LAPD boat, causing huge explosions, because of course it does. <laughs> Thankfully, Sean's boat is made out of vibranium, so he's fine, and the boat just keeps on trucking, despite the fact that his fuel line ruptured, he just flew through an exploding boat, and you know, uh, who cares? Nobody cares anymore. <laughs> Suddenly, his boat catches fire and stops dead in the water. The fire is put out by a passing boat. No, of course not. Sean jumps from his boat onto Caster's, and Sean's boat slams into a dock, causing a massive explosion. <laughs> Sean and Caster fight on the speeding boat for a minute before Sean falls off the side. Thankfully, he grabs a steel chain hanging from the front of the boat for some reason, and then water skis for a bit while his hair grows about eight inches. <laughs> Stunt guy couldn't cut his hair. <laughs> Second time, it, same thing when they jumps off the hell of the prison helipad. It was like obviously a guy with like longer hair than Nick Cage. Eighty million dollars <laughs> can only go so far, you know. <laughs> Sean makes his way back onto the boat as we enter our three of this boat chase, which mercifully ends when the boat hits a dock, launching them onto the beach where they explode on impact. <laughs> no, wait, just the boat explodes, not their bodies. <laughs> By the way, the boat seen explodes. That happening, though. Like, their bodies just explode, <laughs> and then they're fine. <laughs> By oh, the way, I the boat explodes cool. despite the fact that it impacted with water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just turns upside down. Castor and Sean are just fine, though. Even though a violent explosion just threw them both like fifty feet, since this is basically a cartoon at this point. <laughs> They fight on the beach for 20 more minutes before Sean stabs Caster with a harpoon gun that conveniently happened to have landed near them. Sean then shoots Caster with the harpoon gun since he remembers guns fire things and you can do more with them than beat, choke, and stab people with them. <laughs> but Caster catches the harpoon somehow and then he slices up his face or uh, Sean's face. So he has to stay Caster Troy forever. But this is, of course, ignored like 20 seconds from now. <laughs> I think it's more like every time you look in the mirror, you'll see this face all hacked up. And he tries because he's like, knows he's going to try and put the face back on. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. That's what I was thinking. But like they just completely ignore that. No scars whatsoever. Yeah. It's just fine. Anyway, Sean finally manages to stick Caster with a harpoon and screams. Die! <laughs> in his dying face. Personally, I would have said, look who's talking now, motherfucker. But that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, that was like part three with, it, with the dogs talking like, suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then just 
Was he not in the first one? I thought he was. No, no, it was Look Who's Talking. There's Look, look, look uh, Who's Talking 2, T-O-O. Right. And then Look yeah. Who's Talking Now, which is like the third <laughs> the one pets. where the babies are grown, oh, but the pets yeah. are talking. And <laughs> <laughs> Then just to make this fucking thing even stupider, dying John Travolta sings, ready for the big ride, baby, while twitching goofily. <laughs> <laughs> It's callback. He does it. When yeah, he I know. It's thrown into the jet. Just engine. the way he does it, though. The, the FBI shows up, and rather than kill the guy who just harpooned the director of the FBI, they immediately go to Sean's <laughs> aid since Eve's phone call explained away the most ridiculous premise of all time, and they believed her. Mm-hmm. Why not? They take Archer to the hospital where he tells the guys who had nothing to do with the first surgery that he doesn't need the scar put back where his kid was shot, even though. They'd have no way of knowing it was ever there in the first place since the Walsh Institute and all its records were burned to the ground. I thought he should have just asked to keep Nick Cage's abs rather than go back to being Chunky Travolta. (laughs) But again, that's just me. (laughs) And just like that, thanks to DC's top medical team, they make him look just like he did before the surgery. No scars. Looks exactly the same. It's been 25 years since this movie came out. And the idea of this is still considered laughably absurd. (laughs) He, he shows back up at home <laughs> through some particularly thick L.A. smog that's also in the house for some reason. <laughs> like, I was hoping I wasn't the only one who noticed that. It's like it's just yeah. a fucking smoke machine right outside. <laughs> yeah, it's like even down the hallway of the house, it's all smoky. too. <laughs> I mean, did he uh, die on the operating table? Maybe like he yeah, didn't actually get his face fixed because that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and he rubs his daughter's face like he's doing the thinner curse on him. Thinner. Anyone remember thinner? <laughs> 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 Everyone stoked to see him. Even though the last time they saw his face, he was the guy who killed Sean's son posing as him. And he literally raped Eve and tried to rape his daughter. But whatever. They got some issues. Would have some trust issues after that. <laughs> Thankfully, he didn't come alone. We see the hollow eyed feral boy from Dietrich's hideout show up <laughs> looking deranged and spooky as ever, sporting the dumbest haircut in the long history of dumb haircuts. <laughs> Jamie strokes his face and you can tell he smells her last trip to the bathroom being coated onto his face. (laughs) Jamie shows Adam to his room and they all live happily ever after. Well, Adam lives happily ever after in an insane asylum because he killed the whole family while they slept that night. But that's a tale for the sequel. (laughs) Maybe that's what happens in the sequel. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's it's just like Halloween, but it's Adam. (laughs) (laughs) 